Image London, the world's first ever theory of war, concerning two Greek cities, might appeal to President Trump. Athens and Sparta, old allies, went to war 2,500 years ago, according to the historian Thucydides, when plucky Athens grew powerful enough to rival Sparta, then the preeminent Greek power. The natural order could not abide two peers side by side, making conflict inevitable. But that was the old world of ruthless self interest and zero sum competition. Today, nations have some idea of how to rise above those instincts. Consider the half century alliance between the United States and Europe. A unified Europe is America's closest peer in economic and military strength. Under Thucydides's theory, which held for millenniums, conflict between them should be inevitable, and yet it is unthinkable. The scaffolding with which nations have lifted themselves above the old ways is sometimes called the liberal international order alliances, free trade and organizations like the United Nations. It remains a work in progress, but one at least intended to hold all nations in peaceful coexistence. Mr. Trump, in his instinct for the old ways, is pushing and pulling at that scaffolding and has taken several opportunities to shake its foundations during his week-long tour of Europe. Distrustful of all agreements except those he forged himself, Mr. Trump treats even allies as competitors. His is the world of Athens and Sparta. And while that hardly means a descent into war, Mr. Trump's instincts have brought conflict in other forms. He has begun sweeping trade wars and seems in perpetual diplomatic fights particularly with allies. As the international order as we know it at risk from Mr. Trump, as establishment foreign policy voices in Europe and the United States increasingly war? His performance in Brussels, where he threw a NATO gathering into chaos by issuing vague threats of going it alone and then backing down, highlights the stakes of his approach. There are potential gains. Though Mr. Trump has yet to show significant concessions from the Europeans, they may deliver some out of fear of losing American support, something only this president could credibly threaten. Barack Obama spent years trying to coax the Europeans into doing more for their collective defense. Mr. Trump, by presenting Europe with a powerful external threat, him, could force them to finally follow through. The potential downsides are abstract but significant. No one is sure how many times Mr. Trump can shake the foundations of the international order before it collapses, either in part or in whole. And no one can say what will happen if it does. But we do know, at least, what the current order supports. And Americans know this particularly well because it was the United States that built this system, in large part to serve its own interests. NATO may be the clearest case. Though Mr. Trump has characterized it as a kind of American protection service for freeloading Europeans, it was intended to keep the Europeans unified and yoked to American leadership. Not only would they never again threaten the United States, their reliance on American power enlists them on its behalf. Mr. Trump has boasted of increasing American military spending to $623 billion this year, from $603 billion in 2016. But American collective defense with NATO effectively adds $312 billion, the combined defense budgets of fellow members, in the military power. That power applies to actual wars as well as the less visible but consequential projection of unused firepower, whether in deterring Russian or Chinese ambitions or keeping seafaring lanes clear. But NATO, like other aspects of the American led order, consists of more than its collective hardware. It is held together by trust that its members will come together in mutual support, and not only when faced with a common threat like Russia. That trust, going against the self-interested instincts of the individual countries, is radically new in the world. Its resilience is unknown. Every time Mr. Trump threatens or berates an ally or calls NATO obsolete, even if he does so to secure greater European commitments to upholding that order, he chips away at the trust holding it together. That distrust filters down to populations. Polls show that European approval of the United States has plummeted, and it steers leaders' incentives away from helping the United States. 
A recent poll found that a plurality of Germans would favor an American military withdrawal from their country. A full scale collapse of the Western security order is so difficult to imagine that it is detailed only in fiction. Incremental breaks are more conceivable, such as a kernel of doubt in the United States pledge to defend tiny Eastern Bloc members like Estonia or Latvia as if they were American soil. Might Russia be tempted to test that commitment? Maybe all this is just another aspect of the cost-benefit tactics that can be seen in Mr. Trump.